Hi guys, this is Eric. Today's featured poet is Julia de Burgos, and we're going to read Farewell to Welfare Island. It has to come from here, right this instance, my cry into this world. The past is only a shadow emerging from nowhere. Life was somewhere forgotten and sought refuge in depths of tears and sorrows over this vast empire of solitude and darkness. Where is the voice of freedom? Freedom to laugh, to move without the heavy phantom of despair. Where is the form of beauty unshaken in its veil, simple and pure? Where is the warmth of heaven pouring its dreams of love in broken spirits? It has to be from here, right this instance, my cry into the world, my cry that is no more mine, but hers and his forever, the comrades of my silence, the phantoms of my grave. It has to be from here, forgotten, but unshaken among comrades of silence deep into welfare island my farewell to the world now we'll take a quick look at the life of julia de burgos this gives you an idea of approximately where she was born julia de burgos was born in 1914 in the city of carolina on the main island of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was acquired by the USA in 1898 in the Spanish-American War. It is a commonwealth, not a state. De Burgos died in 1953 at the age of 39 in a hospital on Welfare Island in New York City after spending a few months in that hospital. The island was named Welfare because the island was owned by the city and mostly was used for hospitals. The poet was buried in a pauper's grave. A month later, her family tracked her down and she was reburied in Carolina, Puerto Rico, where she was given a hero's funeral. The city of Carolina later erected a monument to her. The world-renowned poet Pablo Neruda once stated that, to, that de Burgos was destined to be one of the greatest poets of the Americas. De Burgos was active in the cause of Puerto Rican national independence. Ironically, a branch of the government whose rule she uh, sought to end on the island, um, the United States Postal Service issued a stamp in 2010 in honor of her poetic legacy. Also, since the 1950s, independence has always been not just a referendum away but a majority of Puerto Ricans have voted four times to remain a commonwealth. The last referendum was in 1991, so I guess they did not share her vision. This is a very uh, beautiful work of art, her commemorative stamp. She was briefly married in Puerto Rico, but divorced her husband. Later, she fell in love with a man in Puerto Rico and went to Cuba to save the relationship, but the relationship ended. The loss of the relationship caused her to sink deeper into alcoholism and depression. She went to New York City in 1940. There, she had another brief marriage and divorced her second husband. Here is a list of collections of her works. Julia de Burgos has received many honors, most of them posthumously. Um, she died in 1953, of course. In 1986, the Spanish Department of the University of Puerto Rico posthumously honored her by granting her a doctorate in human arts and letters. Many different artists, authors, and institutions have honored her. The following cities have named uh, streets and or sites after her. Carolina, Puerto Rico, New York City, Philadelphia, Chicago. 
San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Willimantic, Connecticut. All right, let's analyze the poem. The poem seems to have a very personal and obscure frame of reference. It is long on feelings and short on concrete references and definite images, though much of the language is quite evocative. The words and lines, in my opinion, are things of airy, intangible, fragile beauty. The poet was in the hospital gravely ill with pneumonia and, I would assume, knew that she was going to die. The poet wrote only in Spanish. However, Farewell from Welfare Island was written in English. Farewell from Welfare Island was one of the last poems she wrote. One source states that it is the only poem she wrote in English. Another source indicates that one other poem, which it did not name, was written in English. Um, my personal opinion is that this is the only poem written in English. I believe that uh, she was writing this poem in English uh, to linguistically um, indicate that she was leaving this world. The use of English instead of Spanish serves as a linguistic sign of giving up on hope, giving up on the will to live, giving up on her dreams. Um, it indicates she's giving up um, on fighting for the cause of Puerto Rican independence. The use of English symbolizes, uh, linguistically symbolizes absolute exile and shows that her demise is imminent and that death in every sense is taking place. It has to come from here. Right this instance, my cry into the world means that whatever personal poetic statement or whatever cry for Puerto Rican independence she makes has to be made now. The past is only a shadow emerging from nowhere. Means that the past no longer exists, but the past does leave a shadow. The shadow is the memories and feelings left by the past. The persona of the poem seems to be the poet, Julia de Burgos herself. She is poised between and is about to disappear into the two great non-existences, the past and death, or the great void of the future. The poet is on a dwindling island of existence, about to die. The past losses that she has experienced and her impending non-existence prompt her cry. Life was somewhere forgotten and sought refuge in depths of tears and sorrow over this vast empire of solitude and darkness expresses the personal pain of losing Puerto Rico. The pain of losing a tropical island and its culture for a denatured, urban, impersonal existence in New York City and the culture of the USA is extreme. The vast empire of solitude and darkness refers to a vast, inescapable pain of personal loss, much of which is the loss of Puerto Rico. It also functions as a political comment on the dark, at least to a Puerto Rican nationalist, a uh, political comment on the dark reality that her island country is part of the empire of the USA and is condemned to cultural and linguistic exile within the empire. Where is the voice of freedom, freedom to laugh, to move without the heavy phantom of despair? Where is the form of beauty unshaken in its veil, simple and pure? Where is the warmth of heaven pouring its dreams of love and broken spirits? This means that the freedom to be happy has retreated to the non-existent past with its shadow of memories. The plaintive question, where is the warmth of heaven pouring its dreams of love and broken spirits, has a three-part answer in the past, 
under the lost skies of Puerto Rico and with her lost love. The beautiful image of the young virginal bride, the form of beauty unshaken in its veil, refers both to her younger self as a new bride and to the unspoiled natural beauty of Puerto Rico in the past. In a larger sense, it can also be seen as when life itself was virginal, in a sense, when life was fresh and new. It has to be from here, right this instance, my cry into the world, my cry that is no more mine, but hers and his forever, the comrades of my silence, the phantoms of my grave. Focus on the word comrades. This stanza reiterates the urgency of making her poetic statement, her cry, that her cry is no more mine, but hers and his forever refers to her lost love. Her past self is viewed as a no longer existing person. The past self is uh, looked at as a separate person, no longer part of her. Now, her cry is also a collective cry for Puerto Rican independence, a cry that can no longer be hers because she is sinking into non-existence. But the cry is a cry that belongs to every man and woman who is a Puerto Rican patriot. The word comrades functions both personally and politically. The fifth and final stanza repeats and finalizes previously introduced themes. It also introduces a powerful declaration that deep into Welfare Island, my farewell from this world must go. It anticipates her burial in the soil of Welfare Island. Also, it can mean that her cry will be buried, that her personal cry and her cry for Puerto Rican independence will not be heard.